wasn't a book I was planning to write at all. It actually began when uh, a clergyman I had known my entire life came and asked me if I would do the eulogy at his funeral. My reaction was, who am I to be able to do a eulogy for the man who does eulogies? So what I decided to do was to say, well, I guess I'll do it if I can get to know you as a human being. And that began a series of visits to this old wise man uh, that I thought might take a few weeks or a few months. Eight years later, I was still visiting, and that became the underpinning of Have a Little Faith. It's a story of a last request to write a eulogy for a man who, uh, who had been uh, between me and God my whole life. What should I say about you when you die? That's not something I ever figured I'd be doing. But by the time the story's over, it takes me to a lot of places that I never figured to go. As I was continuing to talk with Albert Lewis, I also got to know Henry Covington. I am my brother's Keeper Ministries Church. I had seen this church for years when I used to drive by it en route to go to Tiger Stadium, which is just down the road. I honestly never saw a soul go into this place. For all I knew, it was abandoned. Water stains everywhere, plaster on the floor, holes in the carpet, plastic on the windows, huge hole in the roof. And when the water would come in literally right on the pews, they would have to catch it in buckets and trays. I didn't know what to make of Henry Covington. He told me that he had been in prison, that he had been a drug dealer, been an addict, been an alcoholic. It was nice that he was being honest, but uh, at some point, don't you have too many bad things on your record to be able to turn to God and say, I want to turn it around. Uh, what I came to find out throughout the course of the story of Have a Little Faith was that it's never too late to turn your life around.